When building a PC, it's very easy to be overwhelmed by all the different abbreviations and tons of random terminology that people just like to throw around. So by popular request, I have compiled some of the most confusing concepts for a lot of people to create this quick guide to some of the most misunderstood terms when it comes to PC building. So you don't make any big mistakes when you're putting together your PC and buying all the parts for it. So let's start off with SSDs because different types of SSDs have been confusing quite a lot of people. Because between SATA SSDs, M.2 SATA SSDs and M.2 NVMe SSDs, their confusion has been pretty real. So let's go over them one by one. The most common SSD and the one that most people are used to seeing is this one, the 2.5 inch SATA SSD. So when you hear someone say SATA SSD or 2.5 inch SSD, think this one which connects via a SATA cable to your motherboard. It is the slowest out of the three, but still much, much faster than hard drive. However, that's not the only type of SSD to use SATA to communicate with the rest of the system. Because you can also get an M.2 SATA SSD. And when talking about SSDs, M.2 simply means that it goes into this type of slot on your motherboard. And you have both SATA M.2 SSDs and NVMe M.2 SSDs, and you can tell the difference between them by looking at how they're keyed, or basically where the gaps are in the little golden tips up top, with a SATA M.2 having two gaps like this, and an NVMe having one gap like so. A SATA M.2 is pretty much the same speed as a normal 2.5 inch SATA SSD, because they both use SATA, but it is a tiny bit faster seeing how it's right down the motherboard. NVMe SSDs, however, are a whole different story because they don't use SATA, they use PCIe, which is the same high speed interface used by other devices on your motherboard like say your graphics card. So NVMe SSDs are much much faster than SATA and depending on which gen of PC they work on, usually either gen 3 or gen 4, they can be extremely fast. So that's a quick rundown on SSDs. Now let's talk about something else that's been confusing people and that's RAM. And what's been confusing people is that there's just so many things that you need to take into account. There's what type of DDR memory it uses, there's its frequency, capacity, and latency. So that's a lot of things to keep in mind when buying memory. So let's go over them one by one. With probably the easiest to explain is capacity, because that just explains how much actual capacity is on each RAM stick. With it usually being written down as X times Y gigabytes. So for example, if you have a 16 gig kit split between two sticks, then you would usually see it as two by eight gigabytes type of RAM, because many people also get confused about what on earth this whole DDR4 thing is about. Well, DDR4 is basically the name for the latest standard when it comes to desktop DRAM. And that basically just a fancy way of saying that if you're building a PC nowadays, then make sure that your RAM is DDR4. With DDR3, DDR2 and your standard DDR being used on way older PCs. And you can actually tell just by looking at the sticks what type of memory it is by looking at where the keying is on the pins below. Because each generation of DDR has a different location for the little gap to make sure that people don't put in the wrong type of RAM into the wrong motherboards. However, there's also different sizes of the physical sticks themselves, with the two main ones being DIMM and SODIMM. DIMM basically being desktop RAM and SODIMM being laptop RAM, because of course a laptop won't be able to fit in a giant desktop size stick, so of course they use slightly smaller sticks of RAM instead. Next there's frequency, because just like a CPU, RAM does run at a specific frequency. And with DDR4, it's anywhere between 2000 and even up to 5000 megahertz. And it's recommended that you pretty much get anything that's around 3000 megahertz plus, with Ryzen CPUs especially liking much faster memory. Though, one thing to remember as well is that if you say buy a 3000 megahertz kit of RAM, when you boot up your PC, it actually won't be running at that advertised 3000 megahertz. Why? Well, you actually need to enable a thing called XMP in your BIOS. Finally, there's latency, which is probably the hardest to explain, so here's a rundown. As we guessed by your name, it's to do with the overall latency of getting data from your memory. So, unlike with frequency, which you want as high as possible, latency you want as low as possible. Though it's definitely not as important as frequency. So you usually see that when the frequency goes higher, the latency also goes higher unless you go with some super, super expensive modules that can manage both high frequencies and low latency. So when you have to choose between the two, 
try to go for higher frequency rather than low latency. Because there's only a few scenarios where your memory would really benefit from having both super high frequency and also super low latency, mainly in, as you probably guessed, memory bound scenarios. For example, sim games where there's a lot going on at once and a lot of data has to be stored in RAM. And finally, let's talk about chipsets, because those also have been quite confusing for a lot of people. The chipset is basically a tiny processor on your motherboard that controls communications across the whole motherboard. However, to most people, that doesn't really matter. What matters is exactly what type of chipset is actually present on the motherboard. Because if you don't buy a motherboard with a compatible chipset to your CPU, then your, C then your PC will simply not run. And there's quite a few chipsets available, it gets pretty complicated rather fast. So as a quick rundown, on the AMD side you have chipset that start with the letters TRX, X, B and A, with TRX being the AGDT or high-end desktop platform option, X being the best of the best mainstream option, B being the budget option and A being the super super budget option. And on Intel side you have X, Z, B and H. So unfortunately some of those letters do overlap but whatever, the industry just likes to be confusing. So on Intel side, the X is the series of AGDT chips and motherboards, Z is the top of the top mainstream, B is the budget and H is the super budget. I know it's complicated, I'm sorry. And there's no better way of re-remembering which is which, apart from maybe just memorizing which side has what chipsets. But one thing to look out for to make sure that you're buying a correct chips and motherboard for your CPU is to look at the socket. Because then you know if you're buying a, say, Intel X series chipset motherboard, or say an AMD X series chipset motherboard. Because Intel CPUs use sockets that are called something along the lines of LGA and then a couple of numbers. So AMD CPUs just use two different sockets, and those are SDRX4 for the once again AGT Threadripper CPUs, and AM4 for the mainstream Ryzen CPUs. However, even if you do get a CPU with a motherboard that has a compatible socket, that doesn't mean the chipset itself will still be compatible. And there's just so many rules and exceptions and stuff like that for it, then there's just no better way but just going to the manufacturer's website and ensuring that they list your CPU as compatible with that motherboard. Because for example, let's take a X370 motherboard from AMD. That won't work with a Ryzen 5000 series CPU even though both used a AM4 socket. So that's just a quick rundown of so the most, well, confusing things when it comes to PC building. And is there anything else that you want me to cover in maybe a part two to this? Definitely let me know down in the comments below. And maybe if you're still here, maybe check out my Patreon because even one dollar a month goes a long way in helping out my channel and allows me to make way better videos on videos on way more interesting topics. I'd also thank all my patrons, Gavin Burns, LKB, Naomi Sushi, Ryan, Tiffany Jacobs, and Wolfie. Thank you all so, so much. Also here, you can check out my Discord if you have any more questions about this or anything else, ask me down there. And hey, maybe also check out my Amazon Associates links if you're planning to buy anything from Amazon. And that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.